Well, good morning. It's a great day to be in church, isn't it? Amen. Amen. We have a lot of people on vacation, but we have a great congregation here this morning. All right, you may be seated. I have just a few announcements I'd like uh, to make. Uh, Sister Tammy Carroll had given me a note. Uh, this Saturday, September the 8th at 5 p.m., there will be a women's ministry cookout. She says, today is the deadline for you to sign up if you're coming. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, they need to know if you're coming so they'll have enough hot dogs and hamburgers and so forth for everyone. There's also another sign-up sheet. Uh, if you're going to bring a side dish or whatever, please put it on that sheet so they'll know that. So if you would do this, she would appreciate that and help them uh, plan for that. Also coming up, a uh, men's ministry meeting on September the 17th. This is going to be a fish fry. And guys, I can tell you, you don't want to miss it. It's good. Uh, Brother Dexter Carroll, he uh, fries the fish with, uh, I think he has a helper that helps him. Uh, they are delicious. So uh, there's a sign-up sheet out there if you want to come on September the 17th. Uh, we need to know by next Sunday. So please sign up so we'll have enough fish for everyone. So remember that. Also might mention, as I, I said, I know there's a lot of people that are probably uh, vacationing today and with family. Uh, so tonight we'll be not having any service. Uh, time to spend with your family. If you don't have family around, you just take time to relax and enjoy the evening. So we will not be having uh, service tonight. Thursday night is nursing home visitation. Uh, please take advantage of that. Also coming up uh, fairly quickly is the Danville Area Pentecostal Homeless Camp Meeting. This is going to be in Swansonville. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Swansonville before. Uh, it's, it's out in the middle of the country. I told somebody one time, it's actually, uh, I think, uh, Dry Fork Address. I told them I didn't know that Dry Fork wasn't in the United States. But it, it's, it's not quite that far out. <laughs> uh, but if you have the opportunity, I'm sure you would enjoy their count meeting. Uh, if you're visiting today, uh, please fill out the little tear out and the bulletin. Uh, if you would do that, go by the Welcome Center after church today, and they will give you a gift and give you some information. Uh, so we'd appreciate it if you would do that. If you would, stand with me at this time, and we'll have our uh, prayer of dedication. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again that you have given us the opportunity to be in your house today. There's no better place that we could be today. We come, Lord, to uplift your name and to praise your name and receive that from you that we need for our souls. Lord, we need strength today, and we look to you for that. And Lord, we just pray today as we uplift your name, we bless your name. Let our voices lift in praise to you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. I want you to put your hands together this morning. We're going to sing an old hymn everybody loves called He Abides. Amen. Sing it with us this morning. Seek 
be seated. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning for the needs. There are many needs. You have a uh, little insert in your bulletin uh, shows many of those who are in the nursing homes or maybe at home unable to be here that need prayer. So we want to remember those. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but I do want to mention a couple. We want to continue to remember uh, Brother Doyle Marley. And of course, Sister Cheryl also, let's remember them. And uh, Carol Blackard had uh, surgery this week. That's Heather Hicks' mother. And we need to remember her in prayer today. So if you remember th these two along with those that you're in bulletin today, I'm sure they would appreciate your prayers. So uh, let's remember them as, as we pray. If you have unspoken requests, would you like to just raise your hand? The Lord knows what that request is this morning. He knows all about it. If you would like special prayer this morning, you can come as we have our prayer time and there'll be someone to come and pray with you. I want to ask Brother Earl Hanks if he would come and lead us in prayer at this time. Many times I'm sure that we all guilty we said in a service like today and we hear the prayer requests go forth and it's time to pray. It's like, now, who did they say? What is this problem? What is this person going through? But aren't you glad God knows it all? And he says, as we ask in faith believing, so shall it be. We serve a mighty God who not only hears prayer, but a serve a God who's able to answer prayer. We serve a God who's able to meet all needs. There's nothing impossible for Him, nothing too difficult for God to do. So as we call upon the name of the Lord this morning, let us pray and let us believe in touching God. God is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. And whatever your needs are today, our God is able to meet. Father, in the name of Jesus, do Lord, we come before your presence and your throne of grace today with grateful hearts, knowing that you are a loving, merciful, heavenly Father, God Almighty, who loves us and who cares for us, and who's concerned for every need that we may ever have, regardless of how small, how great, how few, or how many. Lord, if it concerns us, the Lord, we know that it concerns you and it touches your heart. So, Lord, today as we pray in faith believing, we lift all these needs, spoken and unspoken as well. God, for the many who would love to be here but are unable to, Lord, we lift them all before you now. And, Lord, we believe, God, in the authority of your holy word. Lord, as we proclaim in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the sick and the afflicted today, Lord, for their divine healing. For, Lord, we know that you are the healer. Lord God, we pray for every need among us today, Lord, whether it be a financial need. Lord, we know that you are our provider. Lord, that you have promised us in your word that you will supply our every need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Dear Father God, whatever our needs may be today, we know that you are our answer. And Lord, we pray and believe together in touching you. To you all the praise and the glory and the honor. Lord God, as we lift you up, Lord, we believe in for all these needs to be met as a testimony of praise and honor unto you. Lord, we shall go and proclaim unto the world our mighty God. Not just because, Lord, that you're able to do all these things, but Lord, for who you are. You are Lord. You are God, our creator, our maker. You are all good things and all that we have need of. So Lord, today as we come before your presence in this service today, Father, Holy Spirit, we make you welcome. Lord, I pray, God, that you just rain down in this place. Lord, that you'll be seen and exalted and uplifted and magnified on high. Lord, that each and every one, God, would be blessed by you and drawn closer to you today. And Lord Jesus, if there's any among us who's not ready to meet you, Lord, any among us today, Lord, that may 
yet come to your glory and thy salvation. Lord, we lift them before you now. We pray today be the day that they come to your saving grace and cry out to you, Lord, and be saved in Jesus' name. This we pray by faith and believing, and we give you the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. our ushers to come forward. Has God been good to you? Has he blessed you? You know, he asked that we only return a portion of that that he's given to us. You know, it's all his, but he says, just give me back a portion of that. And he says, if you will, that he'll pour out a blessing that you'll be unable to receive. Isn't that a great promise? All right. Ask Brother Tim Simpson to lead us in prayer this morning.
Good morning. It's all about? Jesus. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, one thing since we've been coming here at Stoneville, uh, one thing for sure about this church, Pastor Tommy makes it perfectly clear. I can't recall a single service where Tommy actually spoke or had something as far as speaking that did not make mention it's all about Jesus. Amen. So it's one thing for sure, it's all about Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Tommy's did a great job making sure that we as a church know that it's all about Jesus. Amen. And Tommy's been doing a fantastic job as well in the past several weeks uh, preaching a series that it's all about Jesus. Amen. Haven't you enjoyed the preaching of the Word? Let's give the Lord another shout of praise. And Pastor Tommy, a good hand for doing such a great job. Amen. And I thought, you know, after all of that, and after all the good preaching, it's all about Jesus. Somebody ought to write a song. So guess what I've done? Amen. Amen. And so what? Tommy has taken about six weeks to preach. I'll put in a song in about five minutes' time, so go figure. <laughs> Amen. Anybody want to guess what the title is? It's all about? Jesus. Amen. I hope you like it this morning. It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's my My Savior, my healer, my deliverer, he's my Savior, my healer, deliverer, he's my Savior, my healer, deliverer, he's my Lord, he's my shelter, my refuge, my strong mighty tower, he's my shelter, my refuge. My strong, mighty tower, he's my shelter, my refuge, my strong, mighty tower, he's my Lord. He's my peace, my comfort, the joy of my life, he's my peace, my comfort, the joy of my life, he's my peace, my comfort, the joy of my life, he's my My provider, way maker, helper in all things. My provider, way maker, helper in all things. My provider, way maker, helper in all things. He's my Lord. He's my friend, my God, the King of glory. He's my friend, my God, the King of glory. My friend, my God, the King of glory, He's my Lord. It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's my Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the new time, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down, it's all about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, he's my Lord. It's all about Jesus, 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 all about Jesus, 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 all about Jesus, 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 he's my Amen. Give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
Pastor Tommy, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, he's just trying, he just stole my line there, but you know what? <laughs> it's all right. That's a line I don't mind sharing because it's all about Jesus. Yes, it's all about our Lord this morning, and we just appreciate uh, you being here. And we, I, I so much wanted to continue uh, the series uh, this morning. And, but last Sunday morning, uh, very early as I was uh, flipping through my Bible, uh, there was a passage that just jumped out, that leaped out of the pages in my spirit, in my eyes, in my heart. And I realized as soon as I read it that I would be preaching that uh, this coming week. So I waited until yesterday to get all my thoughts together and all because I was uh, thinking, well, maybe I can still... Uh, do a couple more uh, sermons on us all about Jesus. and uh, But the Lord desires, and I, I really feel, to go a different way this morning. And no other subject in this world that I had rather preach about than Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus is the greatest uh, single subject in the history of mankind. And uh, I love him, and I am believing this morning that you love the Lord, too, because he's such a, a blessing, yeah. our Savior, our Lord, our Master, our King, our friend. He is our everything, and I love him and appreciate him today. If you have your Bible, turn with us to the book of Galatians in the sixth chapter this morning. And I desire to uh, speak out of a few verses and concentrate especially upon one. Uh, something I'm desiring to challenge you in, and uh, I already know that uh, a lot of you are already active and doing exactly what I'll be preaching, but I don't believe that we could ever uh, do this too much. Uh, I, he's just so good that the Lord is to us, and I believe that he desires for us to follow him and to do what his blessed and wonderful word tells us to do. Galatians chapter 6, and starting with verse number 7. Now, this is a, a very well-known verse that we've quoted many times, and you'll hear quoted and on billboards and preached and all. But verse 7 is a verse that I've preached out of many times, but uh, not the verse that I want to take my text from. But I do want to read it because it certainly goes along with what we'll be preaching on this morning. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. I want us to concentrate this morning on verse number 9. The Bible says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. For a few moments this morning, I'd like to speak upon the topic, be a blessing. You know, that's exactly what the Lord is desiring for each one in this congregation to be, is a blessing. Every one of you, young, uh, middle-aged, elderly, uh, wherever you uh, ministry and wherever your giftings and talents are, God is desiring for you to be a blessing to the people that you come in contact with. I believe God is desiring for us to be a blessing to Him. I believe that. I think as we call ourselves as uh, we call ourselves Christians, correct? This means yes. Amen. We call ourselves Christians, and Christians, the word Christian is to be Christ-like. 
So God is looking for us, if we're Christians this morning, that God is desiring for us to be Christ-like. And I began to think as the Lord was speaking this into my spirit and this week as I give some thought about being a blessing and how God desires for us to be a blessing and to each one that we're around, I thought about Jesus because isn't that what we come to church for? Isn't Jesus the one that is our role model, is the one that we desire to follow, is the one that we desire that our lives be modeled after and as he's forming us to be in the image of Christ. And I begin to think about Jesus and you realize that Jesus is always and was always a blessing everywhere that he went. It wasn't just when he walked into uh, the, the church or the temple on the Sabbath day that he said, well, I'll be a blessing. You know, I think we've got this wrong. The Lord's not just wanting us to be a blessing on Sunday morning. Well, we can be nice for one, uh, for a couple hours out of the week. God is desiring for us to be a blessing on Thursday evening. He's desiring for us to be a blessing on Tuesday morning. He's desiring for us to take Christ with us wherever we go because we are ambassadors for our Lord. Our actions, the things we say, the heart that we have. The other day I was driving down the road and, and as I was on one of these country roads, I seen this elderly man sitting under a shade tree. I drive right, drove right past and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, stop and tell him I love him. You know what I done? Oh, wouldn't that be nice if I, I, it was that easy? I kept driving. See, the thing about me and a lot of preachers, I'm just honest because sometimes I have to wrestle with the flesh just like everybody else. So I drove on down the road, and, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to make sure. Sometimes I think, well, that's just the flesh. I just seen somebody out there uh, sitting, and, you know, but that's not how the Lord works. He laid it on my heart, and I, I probably didn't get a half a mile, and I said, all right, Lord, I'll turn around. I turned around and I pulled off when I got back to where he was at and I looked and I seen his house was way down uh, the, in the holler and, and I, he told me, he said, well, I come out here and I sit to, uh, under the shade tree. And I said, is, let me ask you a question. Has anybody told you that Jesus loves you today? That's, that's a good opening line. You can use that line in convenience store. You can use that line when you're uh, pumping gas. You can use it uh, on a waitress because most time they'll look at you and they'll say no. And he said no. And I said, well, good. Let me be the first to tell you that Jesus loves you. And I realized right then that the Lord was desiring to let him know how much he loved him and how he cared for him. And I seen someone that was lonely and just simply needed somebody to talk to because it took me a while to ever get away when me and him got to talking. Sometimes God is just desiring to see if we will be a blessing. Now, again, I, I didn't have any intentions of stopping, and if the Lord hadn't prompted my heart several times, I would have never stopped. But I, I want to be more sensitive to the Lord when God says, uh, show my light and shine my light. So uh, he was a Vietnam veteran, so I was able to talk to him about his service, thanking for serving our great country and our great nation. And, and he had a, a dozen questions about my smart car. He said, that thing sure is small, isn't it? And I said, it sure is. I said, when I get the money, I'm going to buy the other half. But God is looking for us, and preachers included. Come on now, I'm going to preach on the preachers back there, Ricky. And then, you know, God's not just looking for uh, us to be a, a blessing on Sunday. God is looking for you to be a blessing. Why? Because Christ, everywhere he went, he was a blessing. He never went anywhere, at least he was a blessing unto someone. Constantly, Jesus was a blessing and encouragement.
encouragement uh, to the sick. You know what he done? He, he healed them. We might not be able to heal them, but we can pray that they receive healing. We can love them. Uh, those that were disheartened, he, he gave them hope and he showed them love and he showed them concern. The poor, he reached out his hand of compassion unto Everywhere he went, when he seen someone blind, he desired to open their eyes and to let them see. Everywhere he went, he looked to be a blessing. As Amy and I, we went out, I took my wife out on date night uh, the other Friday night. Come on now. I was a blessing to my wife. <laughs> At least she went with me. She was a blessing to me. But while we were sitting there eating, there was this young waitress that was waiting on us, and, and I got a conversation started with her, and I asked her a question. I said, what is the greatest thing, the greatest blessing, the thing that you've done for someone else this week? You know, I believe in challenging people. She didn't say she was a Christian. I didn't know the girl, probably never even seen her before. And but I wanted I was asking her a question and and she stopped and she thought just a moment and she said, Well, uh, my my fiance's mother, I paid all of her bills, she has cancer, and I thought that was a good answer. But if I ask the same question here this morning, what kind of blessing and who have you been a blessing to this week, what would be our answer? Could we say, yes, I've, I've desired to go out of my way and to be a blessing to someone. I've desired to, uh, to have love and compassion or even patience with, with someone. I've desired to reach out and, and show someone Christ that is within me. Or have we just scooted by the week without going and desiring and looking and saying and praying the prayer, God, would you allow me to be a blessing unto someone this week? You realize that I, this week I, I could at least tell you four people that I know have went out of their way to be a blessing. I received an email Saturday, and that, that person was just loving all over me and telling me what a blessing I was. They didn't realize they were a greater blessing to me than I was to them. After the Sunday service, uh, Monday morning, unexpectedly, two different people just uh, sent me text and said what a blessing the, the, the sermon was, the Word was. They just loved the Word. You know what that was? That was them taking time to be a blessing unto someone. You know that God desires for us to be a blessing. He wants you to be a blessing unto someone. Amen. Hallelujah. Regardless if you're young, if you're elderly, you can reach out and be a blessing. I've seen people that couldn't even get out and go anywhere, didn't even have driver's license, but God would use them to be a blessing to people, to send cards and to call and to be a blessing to those that they was in contact with whenever they were out somewhere. God can use us to be a blessing unto someone in our life. You know, we're all desiring to be a blessing to those that we love, those in our family, but well, what about those that are uh, uh, strangers? What about those that we don't know that well? What about a neighbor? When's the last time that we truly went out our way to do something nice for someone else? Well, Jesus, he was a blessing to the sick, oppressed, the dying, the dead. He was uh, a blessing to the hurting and the sorrowful. He was a blessing to the sinner. Everywhere he went, he was desiring to be a blessing. What if we lived our life like Jesus lived his? You realize what we desire to do? We would desire to be a blessing to those that are around about us regardless of their age. Amen. Regardless of uh, uh, the race, come on now. Hallelujah. We think somebody's got to be our age and our same race and, and, and be about our same economic status before we can have anything to do with them. No, that wasn't Jesus. He was out impacting lives everywhere that he went. Maybe it's some homeless person that God desires for you to be a blessing to. Come on now. But then we get wearied at times when we desire to be a blessing, and the blessing sort of backfires on us. I remember, uh, I don't know, last year, year before last, uh, 
that Amy and I, we had went to, to get something to eat, was probably out on visitation that day, and, and uh, we seen this guy holding a sign how that he needed food. So you know what we done? We got food, and, and we took to the guy, and I got out of the vehicle, and I took it up to him, and I said, we've got you some food. He looked at me, and he said, well, what is it? And then when I told him, he said, well, no, I, I don't really want any food. I, have you got, I'll take some money. Come on now. So I took my money and my food back with me. Amen. It was good. But you know, if a lot of times when we desire to be a blessing to somebody and we have something that wearies us, we just say, well, that's how life is. That's how it's going to be. Uh, people are going to act like that, and I'm never going to help anybody else. And that's exactly what God does not want you to do. He wants you to be a blessing. And I'm not saying go give everybody you see a $20 bill. Sometimes you have to use wisdom and knowledge and understanding and, and doing and feeling the Spirit of God to speak to you. Uh, but don't close your heart out because someone has been hard towards you or hateful towards you or a blessing that you desire to do for somebody else has come back against you. My friend, don't be weary in well-doing. The Bible says, if we'll just keep planting. You know, sometimes if you'll just keep throwing them seed in, you might not see the growth the first day. You might not see it the first week or month, but you keep fertilizing, you keep watering, you keep putting seed in, and you know what's going to happen? You're going to receive, and you're going to reap of that that you've sown. So continue to sow good. When sourness is so back to you, sow good. Sow what the Lord desires for you to sow. And don't be weary in well-doing. Amen. Amen. You know, ladies are different than guys. Hope everybody knows that. It'll take me long in life to figure that one out. We have a different mentality, especially doing marriage cancel. When I marriage cancel, I just tell them to start with, you're different. You'll always be different, and there are always going to be issues that you've got to deal with because you are different. Now, you realize that women, they'll just see one another. They can be strangers. They'll just look at one another and tell each other how pretty they are. Now, men are never going to do that, or at least most men. I've never seen a man that I walked up to and said, I just won't tell you how good you look today. Never happened. I promise you. <laughs> Women do that. I mean, it's just what they do. They just tell, uh, you know, I hear, hear my wife all the time, even you ladies in the church, she's just, oh, you just look so cute in that outfit. And then the lady will say, oh, you just, your hair just perfect. How do you do that? I mean, it's just what women do. But you know you can do that. But what if you tell somebody, oh, you just look so pretty this morning, and, and I just love that outfit, and they look at you and they say, how much weight have you gained? <laughs> Come on now. I told you I'm going to preach you where the rubber meets the road. That's the only way I know how to do it. I wonder how gleeful you'd be the next time to tell them how good they look. I like the hair, Amanda. <laughs> but you see, if, if we do good, God is looking for us to do good. Little sister, Doris Coleman, man, she's just saying, you are a blessing. You know, a lot of time my mama, she'll, not that she don't love you, but sometimes your name just escapes her mind, and she'll say, that lady that is so sweet. You know why? Because she is desiring to go out of her way to be a blessing to somebody. That's what God desires for us to be. 
Brother Don, I just want to tell you, I appreciate you, and I appreciate that precious sister that you bring. Tell me her name one more time. We just appreciate you, and isn't it a blessing when she visits with us? Yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm here every Sunday, and they never give me a hand for being here. I don't know, six or eight months ago, I was in the office, and I got a phone call, and it was this precious little sister, and she was just telling me how she enjoyed my preaching. You know what she was? She was a blessing. When's the last time we picked up the phone to try to be a blessing to someone? When's the last time that we've just desired to, to give somebody a gift to be a blessing to them or buy somebody a meal to be a blessing to them or send somebody a card to be a blessing to them or give them a kind word to be a blessing to them, even if we've never met them before or if we see them every day? It'll not always work out like we expect it to. I remember some years ago, we were still living at Mount Air at the time. It snowed a big snow. There was a, a lady that just had moved in the neighborhood across the street from us, and, and she didn't have any family. I, I, maybe she had a cousin, I think, that was still living, and, and she didn't have anybody. There was nobody uh, much around. She didn't have a lot of friends, and she was uh, just uh, newly moved to the area. And it was a pretty deep snow, too. And I looked over at her driveway and her car all stuck up. And I told Ryan, I said, come on, son. I said, uh, let's go be a blessing to someone. So we grabbed the snow shovels and some, uh, I think maybe some rock salt or something and went over. And man, he, Ryan and I both, we were just shoveling snow away. We were just, we were, we were going to town at it and, and it, we were sweating. It was hard work even though it was cold out. And my, at the time, Ryan was a teenager, my teenage son. I was trying to teach him, you need to con continually to do good and desire to be a blessing to other people. I didn't, I didn't go knock on her door and ask her if I could do it. I figured, hey, anybody won't snow shovel off of her uh, driveway. So we was about done. She come out. You know, you assume somebody's going to come out and say, oh, thank you. That was very neighborly of you. Or come out and say, would y'all like some hot chocolate or as hot as we were shoveling and working a cold iced tea? But she come out and she looked at us and she said, what are y'all doing? <laughs> okay, we have snow shovels in our hand. You see very little snow left on your, on your driveway. We're shoveling snow. And she said, well, why'd you do that for? I'd have done it myself. And she went back in the house. Now, I could have had the spirit of saying, well, let's shovel the snow back in the driveway. <laughs> but that wouldn't have been Christian-like. So we finished what we was doing. We went home. We put up our shovels. And I told Ryan, I said, continue to do good regardless of how people act towards you, even if you do them good. That lady never did thank us for shoveling her driveway, but I didn't do it to be thanked. You know, a lot of times we want accolades. We want to be acknowledged. We want to, the pat on the back is the only reason we want everybody to see us when we do something good so everybody in the community will know what we've done. God's not wanting the right hand to know what the left one's doing. Hey, man, when's the last time we've loaded up our lawnmower guys and said, hey, somebody's sick, somebody's afflicted, let me go mow the yard for them and, and, and show them that I care for them. You know, the funnest time to mow it's when they're not home and it's about knee high and you get it all mowed. You had to mow it two or three times to get it down. And you get out of Dodge before they get home. And when they get home, they have no idea who, who done it. But you know what you done? You done sowed. And God was watching. I think about two people in our church that are, now, now, there's many. I believe so many in this church are continually desiring to be a blessing and, and do good. But there's two people that I think are two of the sweetest, lovingest people that continually are sowing in good, and that's Jackie and Lib Joyce. Yeah. 
Actually, if I could have, Brother Lee, won't you run up here right quick? Would you grab me a couple of these chairs? And I want to set these chairs right here. And I want both of them to come up here. We're going to be a blessing to them today. There's times that I've, no, set it, set it if you will, set them down there and set them on this side over here if you would so Jackie won't have to work, walk quite so hard for it. Now, there's been times that I've desired to bless people before, and you know, sometimes you bless one and then somebody else gets jealous because you didn't acknowledge what they've done. So I'm going to go ahead and let you know now, I, I can't go through the church and acknowledge every good deed we've all done. But the reason I'd like to acknowledge these two today is because they are constantly going out of their way to be a blessing unto others. And if you've never seen that, then apparently you've, ne you've not been around them very long. There's been times that they've sown in the people's lives when they didn't even have it to sow. There's been times that Jackie and Lib have given when they probably could have used the extra their self because they have love. There's times they've sowed so many times into buying somebody some food and taking it to them. And, and I've seen Sister Leah bake so many different cakes down through the years to, to be a blessing, not ask anything in return. Somebody uh, that just was in need or had a death or somebody that was sick or somebody she just unexpectedly desired to be a blessing to. There's times that these two have went when they did not feel like going their self. Come on now. A big part of you, they've been to, to visit you. They've called to check on you. They've loved all over you. Uh, they've encouraged you. They've sent you cards. You know what they're doing? They're an example of being a blessing. They're an example uh, of not being weary. I'm sure there's been times that they've been weary. There's been times they've been discouraged. There's been times they've been overwhelmed. But what did they do? They kept just sowing, uh, and they kept sowing. I want to tell you today, keep on on sowing. Keep on sowing because you will reap. I remember some years ago it was I was uh, ministering and we was preaching on the street and, and here in a little while uh, I'm going to shake hands with you like this and I've got to go because I'm supposed to meet uh, about seven or eight preachers in Hillsville at the flea market and gun show. We're going to preach in front of the ABC store today and just proclaim Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I won't have time to shake your hand and be a, a, a love on you a little bit this morning, but we'll try to make up for it next Sunday and hug you twice or shake your hand twice. To, but some years back, there was one of the preachers that uh, was a senior citizen on a limited income, and he was coming to go preach on the street. We were going to King, North Carolina that day, and as he was on his way, he turned in front of a vehicle. His fault, he totaled his truck, and my heart sincerely went out uh, for him. You know why? Because he was desiring to be a blessing. He was desiring to be a help. He was desiring to proclaim the Lord. He didn't have anything except liability on the truck. And, and uh, as my heart went out for him, that he'd lost the vehicle that he drove, and, and now that he didn't have the transportation that he needed. And one Sunday night, as I was preaching, not many people there, I'm, well, I don't know, there's probably 80, 100 people there, but not the regular crowd. Uh, and, and as I was preaching on that Sunday evening, I 
I, the Lord just laid it on my heart to bless him and to take up money to buy him a truck or at least put a down payment. That, I think that was the thought. And you know that a congregation that night took up enough money to buy him another truck to bless him to pay the insurance. And I believe he even had enough money left over to go buy a steak. You know what happened? He was being a blessing. He was sowing, but as he was sowing, hey man, then God desired to sow and to bless in his life and allow him to reap as well. Well, that's not where the story ends. You know, this is the part about how if we do good, the, the enemy desires to weary us. Come on now. You ever do good and you just felt so good about it and all of a sudden something come along and you just felt like, you know, why did I even try? Come on, be, let, we're just being honest here today. You ever, you ever just give you all, give everything you had and just put it all in and, and then just something just come by to discourage you? Well, you know, I felt so elated. I could not believe that we took up all that money on a Sunday evening uh, just to bless this man that lost his vehicle and he got a newer, nicer, better truck than he had before and was able to pay cash for it. I was so elated. I was so thankful. And until a few Sunday nights later, I was shaking hands and one of the men got me by the hand and he was angry with me because he said, uh, I had some trouble here a while back and and you didn't take up for me, and I had no idea that he had any trouble. Come on now. You know, that could weary us at times. I think about King David and what a, he desired. To, the first thing King David sowed in was praise. Brother Mike, that was an excellent Sunday school lesson this morning. It's a shame that everybody could not hear, uh, and I'm sure all the Sunday school lessons were great. I especially enjoy, I want to be a blessing to you this morning because you're a blessing to me. Brother Mike was talking about, Brother Mike Simpson was talking about this morning, was talking on, uh, at the end of the, the lesson on praise and how that it's going to be jubilant when we get to heaven. It's going to be loud when we get to heaven. We're going to give everything. And he made the statement, why don't we give the same kind of worship here? David was that kind of worshiper. He worshiped God. He magnified the Lord. He praised God. He was continually sowing into praise. You say, well, he sowed into praise all the time. Why, David had so much trouble. But look at all the blessings that he got to reap. He sowed into praise. A lot of our psalms that we preach from today were praises that David had. And it wasn't only when he was on the mountaintop. There was some times that he was down. He was discouraged. He was dismayed. He had enemies. He was on the run. But yet he had a praise that he was going to sow in to the Lord. Oh, what a blessing it is. I've seen people on their deathbed. I remember uh, Red Lawson. His name was Burl Lawson or Berlin, uh, but everybody called him Red. I never knew why, but I reckon it must have been years before his hair turned white. It was red. I don't know. But uh, everybody called him Red. And man, he was just such a blessing to me when I first started preaching. And, and I remember whenever he was in the hospital and just a few days before he passed away, I went to visit him. And on the way out, I heard him as I walked down the hall. And he was saying, praise God, praise God. Throughout the hospital, you could hear down that hall. He was giving God praise. You know what he was doing? He might have been sick. He might have been down. But he realized there was a prayer. Praise unto the Lord to be given. So in praise, so in honor, so in glorifying God. He sowed in honor to God. He was a loyal servant to Saul, even though that Saul desired to destroy him. He still was a servant unto him and didn't desire to do his master any harm. He was a true friend to Jonathan. He was a true friend to Jonathan's family. Uh, but there's sometimes in David's life he didn't see the instant return on his seed. But I'm going to 
say the Bible says that we ought to do good. Even do good unto them that don't do good to you. Do good to those that you don't even know. Do good to your neighbor. Do good to your friends. Do good to your family. Do good to one another because the Lord is desiring for us to do good and not to be weary in well-doing. Amen. Amen. I want to show Abram, you know what he done? He sowed into the Lord. He gave a tenth of all he had. He sowed into digging wells that others got to drink from. He sowed into his uh, family and Lot, even though his herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen had to strove over wells. Hey, he said, Lot, I'll give you whatever land you want. Uh, you go one way and I'll go the other because God has prospered us and blessed us. Uh, you know why? Because Abram had sowed into the Lord and God blessed him and allowed him to reap. And we see Lot went one way and he got close to Sodom and it wasn't long till he was in Sodom. And we see how that when the, the enemy come against Sodom to destroy and to take away them captive, Lot and his family and all his had was captive. And we see that Abram got all of his servants together and he went and fought against those that had took them captive and delivered him. What was Abram doing? Even for a family member that had had left him, even for somebody that had not stayed with him and went the other way. He said, I'm going to be a blessing and I'm not going to be weary. And, and when the Lord come and the angels come and they said, we're going to destroy Sodom. Who stood up? Abram stood up and he prayed, God, if there be a righteous, would you spare them? Would you spare the city, oh God? Abram was one that was desiring to be a blessing. Are you desiring to be like Jesus? Are you desiring to be like David? Are you desiring to be uh, like Abram? Because they were a blessing. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Keep on. Keep on being a blessing. Amen. So I go back to the first question that I asked. The very first question. What have you done to be a blessing to someone this week? What have you done this week to sow into somebody else's life? I already know what this couple's done. Well, not all of it, I'm sure. I went to the hospital the other, uh, just a few days ago, and, and you know what the person in the hospital said? Jackie's done called and said, he was such an encouragement to me. Today, the both of you have been such a blessing Man, to countless people. You, you have reached, the both of you have reached countless people in this community, yes. far and wide. There's people that's been sick that you visited when you were sicker than they were. Do you realize I had somebody I visited here recently, and when I visited them, they said, Jackie, uh, he come to visit me. And no offense to Jackie on what they said, but they couldn't believe he come. They said, he's in worse shape than I am. What was that? That was somebody desiring to sow and being a blessing. Lord, I believe Jesus was like that. I don't ever believe he got weary in well-doing. I believe there's some times, there's probably some things they could share with us that the enemy desired to, uh, to weary them. There's probably been times that they helped others when they really needed the help themselves. They've been an encouragement to others when they were discouraged themselves. That's the true word that Christ is saying. Be not weary in well-doing. I want to do good. I don't want to be weary. I want you to do good. I don't want you to be weary. I want us to continue to be a blessing to sow into people's lives round about us. As Sister Rhonda, she comes. I had no idea. I was thinking about this as I got the sermon ready last night and and the Lord just laid this precious couple on my heart. 
Now, I know they're not the only two in this church that are a blessing. I'm not saying that, but they are two of the most tremendous blessings, two of the most tremendous people that I've ever met in my life, and I truly mean that. Today is, Pastor, we honor you. Unexpectedly, this wasn't something I'd planned or had planned or anything else, but yesterday evening as I was... Uh, just getting my thoughts together, the Lord just laid them on my heart as such an example of what I'd be preaching on this morning. An example of how that they've been there for so many people. Now, down through my ministry, there's no way that I could have kept up with all the years that I pastored, the churches that I pastored, how many people that I pastored, some for many years. Uh, I was thinking there's one family, I pastored them about two or three different churches because they, uh, well, I was pastoring there, and then when uh, I pastored somewhere else, they had moved, and they started attending that church. And they some that I pastored for a very short period of time where they'd come in, they'd move, or something would happen. So I suppose, without having a number, that down through the years, I have bound to have pastored several thousand people. And I can't say out of all of those people that I found two people to be a greater inspiration and a blessing than those that they are around. So today, I, I never have a, a schedule of what's going to happen when I get up here. I have no idea. I didn't know I was even going to bring them up here like this this morning. So I have no idea when I get up what I might do or how we'll begin or even how we'll end. I just desire to follow the direction of the Lord. But as they've been such a blessing to us, I desire to be a blessing to them. Would you join with me this morning as we end this service a, a little differently? Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to put this offering plate right over here. And when you come by, if you just want to drop something in it, we're just going to be a blessing. Now, I'm going to tell you right quick, I don't do this. As far as I know, this is the only couple out of the church that I've ever took up an offering for. So uh, a lot of times I, I used to do it early in my ministry. I'd take up an offering for this one, for that one. And, and then it was every week that I had to take an offering up for somebody. So I finally said no more. The only time I ever do it is if the Lord will lay it on my heart. That's it. The Lord's placed it on my heart this morning that we're going to bless them this morning. We're going to be a blessing to them as they've been to us. And when we come by, we're going to put some money in that plate. If you've got it, if you don't have it, if you don't want to give, don't give. But I want to sow into two of the most precious people that I've ever met. I love the both of you. You've been more of a blessing to me than you could ever imagine. And you've sowed into so many lives. So as my wife comes, let's just make, let's just come this way. It'd be a lot easier. That way we're not coming two or three ways. And I want us to love on this couple. And when you're done, you can consider yourself dismissed. Don't forget no service tonight, and, and I won't be able to be at the back door to shake hands. Everybody stand, raise your hands. Come on, before you come up. Raise your hands. I'm looking. All right, let's shake them. Now we've all shook hands together. So I've got to go as soon as I do this. We've got to go uh, uh, preach.